Okay, some tips for picking up stitches when you've got a pick up um, to do a neckband or um, whatever you have to do. This is a bit that I am, um, um, I do struggle with this um, in my work when I, when I knit things, I do struggle with it. So I'm gonna tell you some of the tips that I have used in the past to try and get this um, even. Um, and what is always the case is you will be told how many uh, stitches to pick up. And what is really lovely about Helen's pattern here is she's breaking it up to tell you which sections to pick how many stitches up in, which is a really great, great help. So for example, um, what we are told to do with the right side facing, so as we're looking at it now, we're gonna start picking up stitches and we're gonna actually start picking up turn it around we're going to start picking up at this corner and work round like so so what i've decided i'm going to do and this is a top tip i've been given is i'm going to mark my little pieces with my trusty trusty cotton yarn i'm going to mark the um the the places where i've got to have done those stitches and i'll show you what i mean as i go along so I'm just threading up some yarn. I've been told I've got to pick up 27 stitches in this section of the neck. So this is um, the front neck. I've got 27 between here and here. I've got to pick up 27 stitches. And I am going to put a little marker, a little, little um, pretend stitch marker that we've worked with before. I'm going to put just a tiny little mark there to say... Between that edge, hold on, can't can't tie a knot and talk. Can't tie a knot full stop, really. Right. Between that edge and that marker, I've got to pick up 27 stitches. That's what I know to start with. Then I've got to pick up 11 across this edge. So between this marker and this marker, I'm going to do 11 stitches. All right. You can mark it however you want, but this is this is um this has helped me in the past. Now I'm still even when I do this, I will tell you right now I will have to have two or three attempts at it. Um because I just I find it really tricky. Okay. And then same again, I've got 27 stitches coming up here, so I'm going to mark I'm going to mark my I mean I could I can see that it's at my seam but why not let's come on let's mark it so that we are being consistent come on. don't forget your sort of dimensions are going to be your what's not dimensions the sort of uh, ratio if you like the ratios in each of these areas are going to be different when you've made the real thing um, so What's going to look fairly impossible to me with the numbers I've got to pick up is going to be reasonable to you because you've got a much bigger pieces, much bigger pieces. Right, so between there and there, I've got to find 27 stitches. My next little one is five stitches, if I remember correctly. Five stitches between here and here, which is, uh, what is that? What are we calling that? Back neck, back neck. All right, so it's that little step down, if you remember that we did. I really cannot thread a needle. So between here and here is my back neck before my, uh, before my um, shaping of my neck happens or the cast off happens there. I'll just do a little knot there and trim it down in a minute. Okay, that's my five section. Then I've got this long, um, oh, I've probably come a bit too far in, but yours will be more, you'll be able to see where yours is better. This cast off section, do you remember you cast off uh, the 23 across that back there? I've got to get 20 in there. I'm gonna mark that. Put a little marker through there. Oh, I could do it like that, couldn't I? 
again, you, you just know, you know that I, oh no, I can't do that because my needle's stuck. <laughs> like I said, I left before we did knots. Um, right. Okay, 20 in there, and then my last little bit is five. So what I've done is I've marked now all of my sections. So when I sit back and look at this, I can remind myself, that's my first section up to my marker. I've got to get 27 in here. I know I've got to get 11 in here, 27 in here, five in here. Can't remember how many in here. 20 in here, five in here. So when I'm looking at these smaller pieces, the fives, I feel quite happy with that because I can kind of go, right, number three has got to be bang in the middle of those two and then two either side of it. Bang in the middle, two either side of it. Happy with those. These longer ones, 27 stitches. It's not a lot of stitches, but I've still got to kind of try it. You know, it's like that thing when you're trying to do lettering bubble lettering on the front of your exercise book when you're at school and it starts off brilliantly and it's all spaced out gorgeously and then you've got to crumple four letters in the end and you've got no space that's basically what happens to me when I'm trying to pick up stitches so to me trying to work out 27 stitches there is just gonna I'm just gonna struggle with that so I'm gonna break this up a little bit more I think so if I half that and put a stitch, I put a marker in here. I know that my markers are going nuts at the moment, but needs must, fellas, needs must. If I find the halfway point, so the halfway point will be from the edge of my work to my first stitch marker. If I stick another marker through there, that's where my halfway point on my 27 stitches has got to go. So halfway, of from 27 is uh, stitch number 14. Okay, so stitch number 14 has got to go in here. So it's starting to get a little bit easier. I'll tie that off in a minute. So now I've only got to work out 14 stitches in this and 14 stitches in this. And I can, I can half again. I can half again. And then I'm down to working seven stitches, which is a lot easier to try and fit in or try and gauge, you know, where to put them than 27 all of a sudden. And I think that's a lot more manageable for me, certainly. So let me just, let me just reiterate what I have done there. You don't have to use cotton. You can use safety pins, which work really, really well. You can use easily removable, um, stitch markers anything at all but anything you've got like a, I just want to show you that cotton will work really well because of course you just pull that out as you work so we started off with this space here having to pick up 27 stitches which blew my mind so I cut that down and I knew I'd got stitch number 14 here which means I've now got basically seven stitches between here and here I find that a, a lot easier to cope with. And that is how I'm going to work all the way around this. Okay, so when I get here and along this straight here and I've got to um, pick up 11 stitches, I will find my midway point and I'll do five stitches either side of it and one in the middle. So that just gives me the possibility that I might be able to pick those up evenly. Now, again, because my... Um, my piece is quite a lot smaller than yours. These sides should be the right size. This bit in the middle isn't. This bit in the middle isn't. But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to show you working this side and then I'll go and, and kind of carry on picking up um, some stitches as we go along. Now, I'm, I have been using the smaller needle uh, with the shorter cable. So I'm going to be using these monstrous needles now. So it's going to look absolutely bizarre. But I do need that long cable. Because I'm going to have a lot of stitches on all of a sudden. I think we're up to about 90 odd stitches. Once we've picked this all up aren't we? How many do we get? 95. So picking up and knitting stitches. Um, I've got to do 7 in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting my needle through. As close to the corner as possible. I'm possibly even going to try and go into that corner like so 
and again nothing no tying off or anything I'm just going to put a loop of yarn over the top of the needle and bring it through easier said than done when I'm working with a much bigger yeah, bigger bigger needle than I've worked with so far well, let me give that another go come on there we go right so that's stitch number one picked up and I'm going to try and go if I can under two strands so it's nice and secure that's two Five, six, seven. So I'm roughly in every stitch here, but not quite. The other thing I want to say to you, one, two, three. If you end up with one or two too many, try not to worry because you can just quickly do a knit together or a purl together to bring it down to the... Sometimes it just falls such that you just don't have an opportunity to do anything but put a pick up a, a stitch in there. And if you pick up one or two stitches in a section, make a note and correct as you go it's really not a problem you're you're better to have a nice neat edge where you've picked up and do your correction on the next row than you are to have great big gaps okay so sorry two four five six and seven and here you go see i've hit my seven marker which is fab it's much easier than trying to um work on 27 at a time so I'll take that out seven and I've got to get to seven this is where number seven has got to hit actually in that spot so here we go one two three Probably five, maybe. Whoops, I may have not done that brilliantly well. Let's see, six. Okay, we'll see, let's see, let's see. Seven, what do you think? Does that look fairly even? It's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. Okay, so I've got 14 now and I'm now on the other half and I've got 13 to go in here. So that is purely and simply how I am going to work my picking up as I go along. I'm gonna half, half again here and put another stitch in. So I know I've only gotta do 13. Can't do it, can't do it. Like I said, if, if you've got um, safety pins, of course, they work a treat as well. So 14. So I've got 13 to, to do between where I am now and here. So this, this point here is going to be stitch number seven. So let's try and get six in before that. Sometimes I don't know how your shaping has fallen, whether you've got a yarn over right at the edge. Hopefully not. And round I go. Five, and six. And that is my top tip. Again, I'm pretty sure you'll have already had that in your knitting arsenal. But if you haven't, hopefully that will that will help you. So I'm going to go around marking like that, picking up in those little sections, having broken it down like that. And I will see you when I've done it all. Okay, I have picked up all the stitches now. Um, I've got them all on this lovely cable. I'm trying to even that out a bit. Let me just show you if I go like this. Oh, my needle stuck here. If I go like this. And get those cables out of the way a bit. Can you see? I have picked up stitches all the way around this neck opening, all the way around it. Um, I think yours is probably going to be substantially larger than this because it's smaller gauge wool and I knit it on smaller needles. But it, as I keep saying this all the way through, it's just to show you the techniques. So your neck um, opening on your piece is going to be a lot bigger. 
Howsoever, we are now ready to start the rib uh, on our project. And we will be starting, row one will be with um, the wrong side facing. Okay, so the wrong side facing. You're going to start with a purl one, then knit one purl one all the way around in rib. Now, if you have picked up extra stitches, this is where you're going to need to, um, if you want to, um, correct them if you're happy with the, if you're happy with the layout of it. And it's only a couple of stitches. I won't worry too much. If you've got, I mean, you should have 95 stitches. If you've got 120 or something, there's going to be a little bit of crowding in there and you might want to pare that down a little. But if you've got 97, I don't think anyone's going to notice. Um, if you've got 45, you might need to revisit. Okay, but otherwise, I think you're good to go. And it is seven rows of one by one rib. So literally, purl one to start with and then knit one purl one. And off you go, chaps. Seven rows of very soothing one by one rib. I'll do a few rows of rib, probably not seven, and um, see you at the end. <laughs> 